Gather round, heroes, and join me for an in-depth look at the secrets of Demio. In this episode, we peruse the wares of Klepto and his traveling bazaar. In part two, we'll focus on the everyday gadgets he hoards, as well as magic lamps and potions. The gadgets section includes more mundane objects. Some are dead simple, while others have some interesting uses. Yup, a bone. There is some debate as to whether this comes from a cow or a vilther. Either way, it's one of the most versatile items in the game. It can target anything within 10 spaces, requires no roll, and takes zero action points to use. First off, it does one point of general damage, so this is still effective even if you're weakened. This is good for detonating lamps, stripping absorbing armor, finishing off an enemy that is very near the end, and doing a bunch of extra damage to a marked or frozen enemy. And it's all guaranteed since there's no roll. Monsters like bones, don't they? Then there's the taunt. By tossing this at an enemy, you make yourself a priority target for melee attackers. The guardian can divert monsters going after the squishies. You can taunt party members too. It even bypasses astral barrier. Finally, Canines find them tasty and nutritious. What is that special treat? Sausages. You can convert an enemy elven hound into a permanent friendly unit with a bone. If they're already on your team, they heal five hit points. Monsters this includes like Verochka, who gains the friendly status, that little heart that hovers over her. This makes enemies ignore her for some reason. This is the cheapest card you can buy, and therefore the cheapest way to get mana when recycled or it can be traded to the beggar for a Detect Enemies card. The BAFTA goes to the Bard for a zero AP way to get more involved and gather allies at the same time. Panic Powder strikes enemies and charmed enemies in line of sight at long range. It requires no roll and takes no action points, make it good for taking out a tough opponent from a big fight. The BAFTA goes to the Assassin for helping find safety when he's taking a break from sneaking. Bottle of Lie can target party members and enemies alike, in line of sight, up to 10 spaces away. It takes no action points to use. The bottle does 1 damage on a hit, or 3 on a crit, plus the target is poisoned for 3 turns. The most impressive aspect of this card is the ability to annihilate slimes with a single hit, bringing giant slimes and slimelings alike to 0 hit points. And it's heartbreaking when you miss. Maybe this will solve your... The BAFTA goes to the Bard for a zero AP way to get more involved with the fight. Yes, yes. Web Bomb is an acquired taste and stands out from the other gadgets because it takes an action point to use. It can target anything except lamps, coin piles, points of interest, and yourself in line of sight up to 10 spaces away. Wherever it hits is covered by webs in a 3x3 space or 5x5 on a crit for three turns. Anything hit by the web bomb or moving through a space with webs becomes tangled for two turns for enemies, one turn for players, counting down at the end of the turn. Be aware that monsters won't step into webs if they can avoid it. Let's see what the monsters do. Tangled creatures become the favorite target of enemy giant spiders and spiderlings. Cracking open some eggs and launching a web bomb can make a decent combo move. Spiders blocked from reaching their priority targets could also be stunned. While tangled, movement drops to 1. That's half speed for most monsters, and is especially effective at slowing rats and elven spearmen. Anything with a movement of 1 is blocked even by a single row of friendlies, enemies, or lamps, whatever. The BAFTA goes to the Guardian, who can keep knocking enemies into the webs and keep the feeding going for longer. One more thing can be used on yourself only. Oh, there's one more thing, sir. And gives you an extra action point. I've seen up to five action points, but I haven't heard of a limit. Obviously, it costs zero action points to use. Let the other cards in your hand dictate how you use it. If it's not taking up any space, hold on to it until you have a good place to use it for extra moving and attacking. If you have too many cards, try to use up several in one go for great effect. Playing it does not expose a stealth assassin. The BAFTA goes to the Bard, because he needs all the extra action points he can get. Strap in, it's time to talk about lamps. Lamp cards can be found at Kleepdos and in chests. Once they're played, they become part of the dungeon just like any other lamp, and can't be retrieved except for the Barbarian's grappling hook. All lamps have one hit point. 
but they don't take damage from certain attacks with what I call soft damage. This includes Water Flask with a Courageous 2 buff, Repeating Ballista, the Behemoth, and Hurricane Anthem. All lamps do damage in some way or form. Beware that killing monsters by indirect methods such as lamps won't bestow item drops on you necessarily. These items like water flasks, magic potions, and even keys will be doled out randomly. Sometimes they will disappear forever. I think Arlie steals them. Poison lamps detonate with two effects. First, a 3x3 three three area is covered in poison and all creatures within gain the poison status for three turns. Second, the targeted square expands at the end of each monster move for four turns. It expands to each adjacent space after the turn it explodes, so it doesn't appear to actually start expanding until the following turn. After it reaches 9x9, nine nine, it disappears on the next turn. Obstacles like walls and trees will slow its expansion. Portals will allow it to expand through them to the other side. The BAFTA goes to the Guardian for being able to strike it with the knockback so it explodes without poisoning herself and using that same knockback to do additional damage by hitting things into the poison. Ice lamps do a straight up three ice damage to a 5x5 area and makes those creatures frozen for one turn. If this catches the player who detonated it, they only lose their remaining action points. The BAFTA goes to Warlock for being able to freeze monsters with one action, then use Master's Call with the second action for an additional six damage. Oil lamps do five damage to a 5x5 area, or it heals three damage to any creature with the Corrupted Rage status. The fire ignites poison clouds for the same damage throughout, and in the area of overlap, it delivers the damage twice, 10 points total. These are the cheapest lamps to buy. They can also be traded My to Thor Sermal for a luck potion. The BAFTA goes to the Guardian for being able to blow up everyone and redo her armor like nothing happened. For the Water lamps are a pain to use, doing 3 damage to a 7x7 seven seven area, so it's impossible to just drop it and pop it without going for a swim. It makes everyone wet and vulnerable to certain types of damage, so it can sometimes be worth the sacrifice. The water expands from the lamp and pushes things away from it, even heavy creatures like the Silent Sentinel. It will push creatures onto a different level, so long as there is no wall or gap between them. The BAFTA goes to the Sorcerer for being able to move away and safely trigger it, then electrocute wet monsters. Or if he doesn't mind the damage, he can punch and zap all in one turn. Vortex lamps are like chaos in a bottle. Crack them open to suck everything within a 9x9 area and do one damage. Not much on its own, but great for pulling everything tightly together and then detonating all the lamps. You never get the same reaction twice. These are excellent for destroying spread out groups of rifts in Book 5. The BAFTA goes to Barbarian for accurately launching it where it can do the most damage. Most potions are pretty similar, usable on yourself or given to another party member or companion within two spaces. They take no action points and do not expose the stealth assassin. We'll start with the cheapest and strangest one, the Water Flask. When used on yourself, it heals three damage and removes the corrupted status. You can't feed it to someone else like most potions. When used elsewhere, the range is 12, that's the normal 2 for potions, plus 10 for thrown items. It can target anything except coin piles and points of interest, and splashes a 3x3 three three area with water. This does zero soft damage and makes everything hit wet. Wet removes corruption and does 3 damage against corruption slivers and cores. Even doing zero damage, an attack can still be useful. A splash of water will stun the Hydra and eliminate Umbal's clones. It can be turned into an annoyance with Courageous 2 and into a fear factory with Courageous 3. You'll also do 3 damage against any marked target from the Hunter's Mark. This is a free starting card in Book 4, though you need to be there when the chest opens before entering Level 1. It's cheap, so it's a good one to recycle for mana if you don't want it. It can be traded to the beggar for a Swiftness Potion up to 3 times. Playing it does not expose a Stealth Assassin. The BAFTA goes to 
Sorcerer for tripling the damage from Zap and Lightning Bolt and getting plus two damage from Freeze. Antitoxin, Fire, and Ice Resistance are all very similar, granting immunity to damage from Poison, Fire, or Ice. Not only is this taking the sting out of some monster attacks and environmental damage, but it gives you the freedom to smash matching lamps with no fear. It's especially useful when you can stock up on those lamps at Kleptos. Although Antitoxin will remove the Poison status, Ice Resistance doesn't remove the Frozen status. These are cheap cards to recycle for mana. The BAFTA goes to... Sorcerer, for leveling up his damage while giving him something to do with that extra action point. Healing Potions are your basic recovery item, healing 7 hit points. This is one of two cards that can be used by a downed hero, but if used in this way, it brings them up to only 3 hit points. It's a starting card for all classes, and there will always be at least one available at every bazaar. There are five potions which grant a permanent boost to the drinker. These are always great, but think about who in the party will benefit most from them. You might want to arrange a trade with another player, or just give it to them for free, knowing it's for the good of the whole party. Each character can drink up to three of each of these potions. Quick note about Kana, she can drink all of these except the magic potion, but she will lose all permanent buffs whenever she respawns. That includes when she dies, starts the next level, or the player reconnects. So, as kick-ass as a golden Kana doing 7 damage would be, it's generally not advisable. These buffs include the Vitality Potion, the Strength Potion, the Swiftness Potion, the Magic Potion, and Alog's Fighting Spirit, which increases defense by 1. These cards all have good mana value. Swiftness can be received from the Beggar in exchange for a Water Flask card, and Alug's Fighting Spirit can be received in exchange for a Strength Potion. Now on to the Temporary Boons. Luck Potion is a pretty expensive way to maximize your output. Sometimes more importantly, it guarantees you don't miss. This potion is for players only, no Kana or Companions. There's no right way of using it, but certain combinations give you the best bonus. Starting low and working our way up to the number one spot, we have Astral Strike, Pit Fighter's Leap, Hail of Arrows, Piercing Throw, Freeze, Coin Flip, and the BAFTA goes to Sorcerer for the Fireball, especially if it's in a Poison Cloud for double damage. Adamant Potion is a great tool for boss eradication, and also good when things get out of hand. Negative statuses are immediately removed and won't come back, plus you can't take any damage. A couple of notes, stepping into corruption still causes the loss of one action point. Playing the card on a downed player won't revive them as it doesn't heal hit points. Focus Potion is another one that can only be used by heroes, not Kana or companions. You get an extra action point for three turns. Potion of Invisibility is a pricey drink. It cloaks the drinker for three turns, much like the Assassin's Sneak card, but this one doesn't end when you attack or play other cards. Whenever you deal damage, it also confuses your target for one turn. Some items are only available in certain books, and available from specific monsters or locations. Book 2, Realm of the Rat King, introduces the darkness mechanic, so you need ways to counter it. A torch is the cheapest and most common way, if you don't count walking up within two spaces to have a look. It can be played within three spaces in line of sight and takes no action what points. This can be used in two ways, granting the torch status on friendlies and as a summons, creating a torch in an empty space. Each has its benefits. Both emit light for nine turns, burning at full strength for three turns to reveal up to ten spaces away, then slowly burning down and losing one space of range each turn. This is not weapons grade fire and doesn't ignite poison clouds. The torch status counts down at the beginning of the turn, so technically it could last a little longer. It temporarily illuminates and extends the creature's vision, but if that creature doesn't share its view with the party, as is the case with summoned rats, spiders, elementals, and charmed enemies, you aren't gaining anything. As a summons, a torch counts down before monster movement. 
It operates like a scrying beacon with 15 hit points, sharing what it sees with the party. Even after it burns out, it still shows two spaces around it, just like Veroshka or Hero without a light. Also like a scrying beacon, the torch will deaden any monster spawns in the area, not just within the range of its dying light. At least one torch will always be available at the bazaar, in Book 2 only. They can also be found in chests in Book 2. Playing this card does not expose the stealth assassin, oddly. The BAFTA goes to the Guardian, who needs a visual to use the move and attack that is her main tactic. Book 3, Roots of Evil, brings a couple of new cards, available only by killing certain monsters. If that monster is killed indirectly, for example by popping a lamp next to it, or killed by a friendly, then the drop will go to a random hero. Sometimes, nobody will receive it at all. Wooden Bone operates similarly to a regular bone, except that it makes Root Hounds friendly instead of Elven Hounds. It does the same guaranteed damage, taunting, making friends with or healing the Root Hounds, and it can also be used to summon a new Root Hound by playing it on a wet space. This item is only acquired by killing Druid Hound Masters. The BAFTA goes to the Bard, who can enhance a friendly's defense and offense. Sigitarian Javelins can be played on enemies, including Charmed, within 10 spaces in line of sight. It does 5 points of damage, or 10 on a crit, and the target is weakened for one turn. It is especially effective against the Root Lord. As the name implies, this item is acquired by killing Sigitars. It has a good mana burn value. The BAFTA goes to Player 1, or as close as you can get. We'll go into why in a future boss battle video. Just. Book 4, Curse of the Serpent Lord, brings the Jeweled Scarab, Die, which is both a monster and an item. Beyond its value, it has no function. It sells for enough to buy Strike. any other item at the bazaar, and it burns for 50% more mana than any other card. It can be traded to the Artifact Monger on level 2, located at the yellow POI, for a high-value card for each player. Although the card received by each player is random, anyone talking to the merchant will be able to see what he is offering in trade. You might just choose to hold on to it and sell it to Klebdo. Living Scarabs can be found under Sand Piles in any level in Book 4. Since Sand Piles spawn like monsters, and there is a chance that any Sand Pile will yield a Scarab, there's theoretically it. no limit to the number that can be found. Despite this, you can only trade with the Artifact Monger once. In Book 5, Jeweled Scarabs can be received from the Beggar in trade for a Teleport card. The BAFTA goes to Sorcerer, who has the most expensive cards and needs a lot of money to buy them. There are two other rare items that you can get in Book 5, Reign of Madness. Vortex Dust can be played on enemies including Charmed, Lamps, and Empty Spaces. It does 1 magic damage in a 3x3 three three area, or 2 on a crit. It's not a lot, but it's enough to trigger lamp explosions. If the target space is empty, it pulls a nearby creature or item into that space. That can bring enemies into place for follow-up attacks, or pull friendlies to safety. Of course, its primary function is destroying rifts. Because of its other uses, you might stick to only dusting medium and large rifts and keeping a little extra firepower in your hand. This is a free starting card in Book 5, though you'll need to be there when the chest opens before entering Level 1. The BAFTA goes to Sorcerer, or whoever is getting the magic potions in your game. Rama's Reckoning is only usable in Level 3, and can only be played on the Mad Elven King or one of the Royal Servants in Line of Sight. The, end is mine. the King takes 15 damage, and each hand takes 35 damage, and all other monsters on the board take 5 damage. This card is only available through trade with the Beggar in level 2, and he will only give it up for a Rejuvenation card. I mean, he could just give it to you and save the world, but whatever. I guess Beggars can be choosers. Playing this card does not expose a Stealth Assassin. It has one of the best resale values in the game, but is worth zero mana. The BAFTA goes to the Sorcerer, or who is ever getting the magic potions in your game, since when you use this you will end up with a hand full of Vortex Dust. Thanks for checking out another Masterclass. If you learned anything, I'll trade you this information for pressing this like button.
Know something I don't? I'd love to hear about it in the comments. Keep an eye out for future videos on monsters, game mechanics, and boss battles. This has been my why. I'll see you in Helmar.